Braylon, I did want to. I did want to. Yeah, right. I did want to get you to this. Napkin. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut That's you all right. L- l- from the NBA <laughs> draft last night, Jet Howard from Michigan went number 11 to Orlando. Same team his dad was drafted by. And then at number 15, Kobe Bufkin was drafted. Who? Kobe Bufkin no, to the Atlanta Hawks. Two top 15 te- <laughs> Two top 15 players in the NBA draft the Michigan Wolverines had. I guarantee you. And I, I haven't, I mean, there's no, I don't have this to back up, but I guarantee you never in the history of college basketball before have two top 15 guys in the NBA draft been taken from the same team and that team not make the field of 68. And lose in the NIT. I guarantee you that's never happened before. That's why the NF, I mean, that's why the NBA now, as you look at scouting, as you look at trying to understand what guys are looking at, what GMs are looking for, what coaches are scouting, you know, what players make sense, it's so tough. Michigan did the same thing last year. We didn't think they had guys in the first round. Caleb Houston goes in the first round. Muhammad goes in the first round. I think to the Clippers, I want to say, guys that keep getting drafted, and Michigan doesn't have a good, doesn't have a good season. The NBA more than ever has become about what? Potential. That's what it's all about. Like, the NBA has always been about potential. That's why you see guys leave earlier uh, out of college into the NBA, whether it was high school back in the day, whether it was after year one, whether it was even after a sophomore, whether it was even after a junior year. Mm -hmm. Now, to a certain extent, it's all about the potential. This guy has the potential to do this. This guy has the potential to do that. You don't know where they're playing at, what their competition level is, but you have the potential. He's 6'7". When I looked, the one thing that bothered me about Asar Thompson, and that's how you say it, I got it right there, Asar Thompson. One thing that bothered me is the shooting percentage. The shooting percentage. If you're not going to be shooting against foreigners, like if you're not playing against grown men overseas, if you're not playing in the G League where you're playing against former NBA talent that's trying to get back in or guys that have that talent, I need the shooting percentage to be up. He shot 67% from the free throw line. He was 30% from the th- uh, he was 67% from the free throw line, 30% from the three point line, and I want to say floating around 41%. Uh, or 52, somewhere, I think 51%. He's still the better go. defender of the brothers. He is the better, He's defender. the better defender. I understand that. And I have no problem with that. We need some defenders. you got to have some defenders with all the points that are being scored in the NBA. But when I say this, I say that to say this. Fifth pick overall, and he was the fifth pick overall in Ryan Armani for the last two months. Mm-hmm. He's been the fifth pick overall for the last two months, and those are his percentages. Those are his stats. It's just a potential league. That's why you got to have a coach, and that's why it comes back to Monty Williams. you got to have a coach that can make players better over years. He can grow them. That's why paying Monty Williams is going to prove to be worth it. And that's a great point. I didn't even think back to last year when they had two first-round picks. Now, they weren't two top 15 picks, very, very but they were true. two first-round picks. So we didn't even think they would get drafted. Juwan Howard had four first-round picks in the last two years and not much success at that school. Yeah. This basketball program has steadily declined since, well, I don't want to say steadily totally, because they yeah. did have the nice, n- nice the, the, the one year, yeah. but steadily declined. Is there concern? Because I have some major concern over Juwan Howard, the direction of this basketball program right now. Seems to be getting the talent, not seems to be putting that talent together. Yeah, Maz. I just want to say, Ry, if you're a father of a, of a boy that's going to go play basketball and Juwan Howard's knocking on the door, all he has to tell you is, look, I get, I'll get, i get your son in the NBA. Isn't that enough for you? Well, that is exactly what John Calipari's uh, recruiting tool is. John Calipari, I watched a documentary on John Calipari one year, and he said, I'll never guarantee a national championship. I'll never guarantee anything. But he'll walk into somebody's uh, room and say, yep. I will change your families." And your uh, hundreds of years of, of your family's financial history by helping your kid get to the NBA. And he does. And he's absolutely is right. Is that what it's That's all what, about, though? It is. To, well, to be honest, yeah. Dollars, yeah. Dollar, hey, money talks and BS walks. One yep. of the biggest problems, too, though, man, is you look at it like this. If I'm a, if I'm a parent, if we're, I'm a family, my wife and I is my son. He has talent. Juwan Howard comes knocking at the door. And I love Juwan Howard. Talk to him. He and my mom talk to him all through uh, Chad Tough Foundation. Love him and his wife. If I'm, if I'm a parent and I'm with my wife and we're talking about our son, you're talking about Michigan, you're talking about a team that can't not win in the tournament, they can't get to the tournament, then they can't win in the tournament. And then you have issues and situations where you're looking at, is Juwan Howard the one really running the X's and O's? Is Juwan Howard in over his head? And then you look at, <clears throat> excuse me, then you look at players like Hunter Dickinson, 
who's former Big Ten Player of the Year, leaves the University of Michigan. Now, granted, he goes to Kansas, which is one of the original Blue Bloods, but he still left a school that you're talking about. This is Michigan. Mm. This is Jordan. This is Jawan Howard. This is Harbaugh. Guys are leaving. That's a tough sell right now. Brian, you have absolutely every, every reason to be worried. Because when you get guys like Hunter Dixon, Dickinson leaving your program, is it even fair to compare? Because I think of the, I think of the the, the uh, early 2010s, and I guess what was it, 2013? You had you had Trey Burke, Tim Hardaway, Glenn Robinson, Mitch McGarry, uh, Nick Stauskas. Mitch McGarry, Nick Stauskas, all five of those Glenn guys. Robinson the third. Glenn Robinson. They all went to the NBA. Oh yeah. yeah. They all went to the and they, they went played. to the national championship yes. game. So you can do both. Yeah. But is it even is today's game Karis even LeVert. even fair to compare? To just 10 years ago because i gotta tell you as a michigan fan i love seeing the players names get called yeah uh but there was something so the problem is we have no connection to them that's exactly right, right. that thank you gotcha. because i was i was struggling with my words I there you back, because when trey burke was drafted was. into the nba i couldn't wait for um uh tim, tim hardaway, hardaway to, to, to hear III, his name Cody go Bufkin. i couldn't wait for nick stauski to get in somebody's corner and knock down three glenn robinson the third oh i couldn't wait for this guy to Stauskas. go in the nba draft last night i felt like Zero connection to these guys. Yeah. I felt cheated a little bit as a Michigan fan because I'm like, uh, what about us? <laughs> a little bit, right? What right. about the Michigan Wolverines? I, and I'm happy for them. It's great. They're fulfilling lifelong dreams, and they're going to go off now and that stuff. But as a Michigan fan, I do feel cheated that you almost, quote, unquote, wasted their their year almost. Yeah. As, I don't know, man. College basket, college basketball sucks. That's just all. That's the at the end of the day, college basketball is the worst sport of of all of Look them. Look at last year's Final Four. Look at you last year's you know, tournament. You didn't know any of them. And to be honest with you, Except I UConn. don't think I watched one game of college basketball last year, so I don't that's, know who that's I'm why talking I just about. Said, uh, look at the Final Four. You didn't have anything. San Diego State, right? Uh, Florida Atlantic, Miami of Florida, and the champion UConn. But again, we're not watching Sorry, college basketball because the best players aren't playing college basketball. Yeah. Look at four of the top five players that were drafted last night in the NBA. Four of the top five did not even play college basketball. It makes the game of college basketball just crappy. College, it makes the tournament crappy. Co college basketball has become a place, and I mean this with all due respect, and it's no hate or it's no disrespect involved for the players. College basketball have not, has now become a landscape where it's a breeding ground for the sixth man on the bench, the seventh man on the bench, the eighth man on the bench, the ninth man on the bench. When you look at the best players in college basketball, Brandon Miller essentially is the best player that played in college basketball this year. Where was his NBA competition? Right. Brandon Miller went into every game the best player in the game, and he left every game the best player in the game. He didn't get tested one time. Played against some really good guys, but those good guy, those guys are going to be the sixth man on the team, the seventh man on the team. After seven years, maybe somebody works themselves into the starter. It's a breeding ground for the sixth through eighth man on the bench. If you're a stud, if you're that guy in college basketball, chances are, night in and night out, you're not playing against a guy that's comparable to your level. Yeah, let me ask you this, and I really don't know the answer. So, Bray, maybe you do. What do they make in the G League, the Elite League, compared to the NIL guys? We have no idea. Say it again, I, man. I, I, Say it what, again. Do they, what do they make in the G Probably League? Probably make and the six elite figures. Years. But, you know, but you got some guys in college making that in the, NIL. The G League's probably around like, probably around like 80, 80K, I, I, I think somewhere like that. I think part of that is your whole life becomes basketball too, Maz. You don't have to yeah. worry about fooling right. around with some English class where you right. got to do a 30-page term paper. You know, that, but you, that, but you that, miss out on the on a, on a great experience well, as well. I well, know both are great experiences, but I don't know. I just wish that the NBA didn't do this, didn't do this league. I'd rather see them still in college basketball. It's like they almost, like you said, it's almost like they eliminated a sport. College basketball field, and no disrespect to anybody who plays high school hockey. I'm not a big hockey guy. But college basketball feels like high school hockey now. 
And by that, I mean all the best players in high school hockey are playing some, living in uh, some yes. in Canada somewhere with some, with some host yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. Play, you know what I mean? Mississauga Play, somewhere. Yeah, playing, oh, 100%. playing in some uh, elite league, uh, not even at home. Don't even go to high school. They do high school and online they come back somewhere. In 19. You're right. Drafted, you get drafted exactly. 18, they come in 19. That's what college basketball feels like to me a little bit now, high That's school sad. hockey. Sad, you know. Um, it's, it's it's just sad from this sense too, man. It, I was uh as I was on the way to work today, man. I was getting ready. I was throwing the fitted on, had the jersey on, thinking about the Pistons, whatever. And Jay Will was on. By the way, that that thing is is getting worse by the minute. ESPN I didn't see it today. It's getting worse. Keyshawn wasn't even on. But I was watching. And I was I'm thinking of Jay Will. I'm like, he probably called. I just sick. instantly started <laughs> thinking about all the Duke legends, man. I'm thinking about Jay Will. I'm thinking about Lou Al Ding. I'm thinking about Mike Dunleavy. I'm thinking about Carlos Boozer. I'm thinking about you Shane know Shane Battier. Battier. I'm thinking about uh, the Alaskan Assassin, Trajan Langdon. Like those days are gone. Like, it used to be fun to watch a squad, man. Just go out there five, six, seven, eight deep. Hell, that's Corey, why you got San Diego State in the Final Four. Corey McGetty. Got drafted higher than anybody on his team, and he was a six-man yeah. Duke. Remember that? But by, by the way, Amani Bates, 49th. I was surprised by that. You thought higher or not drafted? I thought way higher. First round pick for sure. I mean, he because, really, because he really mismanaged. Yeah. Why, do you, why do you draft people? Poe, he ten, show. He mismanaged you know? his his his, his, but, his college. You know, I, I think he did. You know what happened with him? What happened to Amani Bates is John Morant. John Moran happened to Monty Bates. Why is Monty Bates in trouble last there year? He's in yep. trouble for a gun. I mean, don't get me wrong. Brandon Miller dodged the bullet, but it was not his situation. It was his gun. Imani Bates had the gun. Even though it wasn't Imani Bates with the gun, with John Morant and the way things are popping right now in the NBA, you don't want to touch players like that. At least the guys vying for the top 13 spots don't. So mm. that's probably why he dropped.